Hey YouTube, so today we'll talk about what will kill your inverter. So normally in a household, there are two types of loads. You have resistive loads and you have inductive loads. Resistive loads have their voltage and current waves in phase, whereas in inductive loads, the voltage wave is ahead of the current wave. So what are some of the examples of inductive loads? Any appliance that has a motor, for example a lawnmower, a washing machine, a drill, those are inductive loads. Now on a larger appliance like a lawnmower or a washing machine, when the motor initially attempts to turn, the power demand is up to 3 to 6 times the rated power. So, for instance, a 2,500 watt lawnmower could draw 7,500 watts initially when starting. Now, on the inverter that I have, which is a Goodwin ES504, it is not recommended to run high inductive loads like washing machines, lawn mowers, or even air conditioners. You will need a heavy duty inverter that is capable of running these loads. Now, let's look at resistive loads. A, an old incandescent light is a good example of a resistive load, an iron, uh, or even a water heater or a geyser. The, the geyser by far is the largest example of a, of a resistive load. It is not recommended to connect the geyser at all to a domestic inverter. Now some folks have modified their geysers to use kettle type elements. Now a kettle would use probably a 1 or 2 kilowatt element instead of a 3 to 4 kilowatt element that is installed on a geyser. However, in the long run, this will definitely cause more wear and tear on, your, on the inverter components which will reduce the inverter's life. Now in summary, when you are planning out your solar bill, consider whether you would like to run your washing machine or your AC when there is no electricity. So you can then procure the appropriate inverter for your use. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.